all of you and thank you very much uh, for being here. Uh, my name is Kyle Spies. Uh, I'm the Regional Vice President of Development for uh, Conifer Realty. I've been the uh, sort of project manager by default for the uh, Gateway of Peerless development. Um, so uh, um, Conifer is a multi-state developer, owner, manager, and builder of mixed income and affordable communities in the eastern United States. We're here today to celebrate the opening of Gateway at Peerless. This is a 62-unit community. Uh, it has 10 one-bedrooms, 28 two-bedrooms, and 24 three-bedrooms spread in these three buildings here. Um, this is a true mixed-income community. Uh, we have some units reserved for households making as little as $30,000 a year. Uh, we have a lot of units for households making around fifty-five dollars or $60,000 a year. Um, and then we have 15 truly market rate units. So it really, it really spreads the gamut uh, of affordability. Um, my word for today is uh, collaboration. Um, in my 20 year career in this industry, um, for better or worse, uh, Peerless is the most expensive development per unit I have ever developed um, at $29 million total. Um, in addition to new community and fitness rooms, we have a playground and a walking trail. But we also brought new water and sewer service all the way up Peerless Avenue. This site was previously vacant um, with outhouses, wasn't served by sewer, public sewer, when we acquired it. Now uh, public water and sewer is all the way up, uh, up Peerless Avenue. And in addition, with regard to water, we looped it all the way back down 301 uh, to the intersection with 725. Um, so uh, we've enabled really this entire corridor um, and this entire area outside of Upper Marble to now have public water and sewer and be more ripe for development. So um, it's, it's, it's a true economic development uh, uh, um, initiative uh, in addition to just providing housing. Um, this transformative investment could not have occurred without significant support, a sizable portion, portion of which came from Prince George's County. With a $1.5 million loan from their Housing Investment Trust Funds, eight project-based vouchers from their Housing Authority, and a waiver of several hundred thousand dollars in fees based on our status as workforce housing. Um, unfortunately, uh, County Executive Angela also Brooks could not be here with us today due to a last-minute conflict, um, but thankfully uh, Deputy CAO Angie Rogers is here and I'd like to invite her up to say a few words. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, I'm excited to be here uh, to um, do the help do the ribbon cutting on this beautiful uh, new development in Prince George's County. Uh, I bring you greetings uh, on behalf of uh, County Executive Angela Also Brooks. Uh, she unfortunately had another commitment this morning uh, that was running over uh, and couldn't be here uh, with you, um, but. Uh, hopefully you can all uh, see um, her commitment uh, to the production of new housing, uh, new affordable housing in Prince George's County based on uh, uh, the bold uh, goals and commitments that we're making to projects like the Peerless. Um, last summer, uh, summer 2021, uh, County Executive Also Brooks uh, set a new economic development platform uh, for the county. And we set a goal uh, to build 26,000 new housing units, 75% of which would be affordable, uh, and to preserve an additional 6,000 uh, affordable units in the county. And projects like this are helping us get uh, helping us to reach that goal. And so we're really proud uh, to be here to celebrate uh, this opening. Uh, we know a lot of teamwork uh, has gone into uh, making this happen. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, thanks to Kyle and, and your team at Conifer. Conifer, um, we know, has produced quality work um, for over 40 years uh, and have a really strong reputation uh, in this region. Uh, and, you know, we look forward to continuing to have strong uh, developers like Conifer operating in Prince George's County and bringing us quality projects like this one. Uh, the other uh, uh, thanks I want to give is to uh, Episcopal Housing Corporation. Um, 
and you know uh, your executive director Daniel McCarthy I don't know if Daniel is here Daniel hi um, you know when we bring together quality housing and services uh, in the way that you all are uh, in this uh, type of project um, it really uh, helps us to know that we are investing in communities that are going to be stable, um, that are going to be sustainable over the long run. Um, and so we're proud to see this partnership um, between Conifer and EHC come together uh, in, this, uh, in this project. I also want to thank the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development uh, and their director, Gregory Hare. We know, uh, most people know we don't do anything at the county level uh, for the most part without the help of our state partners. Uh, and so the uh, collaboration and communication uh, that continuously comes together between county and state um, is why you see uh, the level of uh, production, the level of work that what we're able to accomplish in this moment uh, is because of our collaboration uh, with the state. Uh, I want to thank our county council. Um, and we're joined here today by uh, Council Member Jonathan Metlock. Thank you for uh, joining us uh, today here. Um, we also don't do anything without the collaboration of our county council. Um, so they helped us uh, to provide that $1.5 million uh, in housing investment trust fund that we were able to provide to this uh, project, um, as well as a pilot, uh, county council approved pilot. Our county council, was our, they were our partners uh, in being able to bring those resources to bear for this project. I think, and Director... Uh, DCD, Prince George's County DCD Director Zapolia will uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I think this is the first project uh, to utilize housing investment trust fund dollars. Um, and so let's definitely give a round of applause for that. Um, the team at the county um, has heard me say many times that a strong housing investment trust fund is the cornerstone of any jurisdiction's uh, affordable housing toolkit. Um, and so the ability of our trust fund to grow uh, and to uh, be able to invest in projects like these is critical um, for us to be able to do the work uh, that we do. Uh, and the County Council uh, took an important uh, step uh, last year, I wanted to say it was, uh, in uh, designating a sustainable resource that will feed funding into our trust fund um, every year. So we used to have this kind of static amount. I think there was about five million dollars sitting there and you know we were kind of hoarding it and <laughs> um, uh, and, and trying to be really judicious about uh, you know where we were putting that money out uh, on the street. Um, but uh, Getting a sustainable source uh, for our trust fund um, allows us to consider even more great projects like these uh, and help to bring those projects to market. So thanks to the county council for that. And we got an even bigger boost from the state this year, uh, bringing back $10 million uh, from the state uh, to boost our housing investment trust fund. Um, and so we've now um, historically this year going to have, I think, over $20 million um, to, uh, to, to divvy out two projects to help them bring good projects to the market. Uh, and then next year we'll start it all over again. Um, so this is, this is really important work. Uh, I am proud to say um, that with the completion of this new development, uh, we are on pace to create 794 uh, affordable units by the end of this calendar year. Uh, and we're also going to preserve over 1,700 uh, units. So those are really uh, important details to celebrate. Uh, and we're so happy uh, that the peer list uh, can be counted in that number. Um, we've seen a uh, historic rise uh, in housing prices. We all know what we're dealing with coming off of the pandemic um, so that uh, projects like these are able to uh, come to market uh, even in the midst of all of those really difficult dynamics is really something uh, important to celebrate. Uh, and I'm uh, really excited to be here to celebrate this with you today. 
So with that, I am going to hand it back to Kyle. And Kyle, again, thank you so much for the hard work of your team uh, in a difficult environment to bring this beautiful project to bear. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Rogers. I, I really appreciate that, and uh, thank you to the county executive as well. I, I also want to take a moment to specifically thank um, your staff in the Housing and Community Development Department for their focus and patience in bringing this development to fruition. There's often times where one person plays a little bit of an outsized role in, in getting things over the finish line, and, and Pam Wilson and her colleague Adam Kolakowski played that role here, and I, they provided me a lot of counsel and aid, and I'm, I'm very appreciative to her. Um, we are, uh, it's great to have the council uh, member Medlock with us here today. Appreciate your attendance. If you'd like to come up and say a couple words, please. Thank you so much. Good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. This is a beautiful day. Uh, we have to understand that rain is life, so despite it being a little uncomfortable and uh, having a little, a little bit of a, you know, dreariness to it. It is a beautiful thing. Uh, once again, I am Jonathan Medlock, the council member for District 6 here in the gorgeous Prince George's, and we are all Prince George's proud to bring peerless community to to our community. I'm so happy to be here. And again, I thank the county executive uh, for her leadership in bringing this together, uh, the county council, and every single stakeholder who has uh, made a difference here in our community. It, it's, such, it's such a great thing. Um, I want to take a few moments to, uh, for everybody to look around and be very proud of this new addition uh, to our community, our Upper Marlboro community. There's a lot uh, and a tremendous demand for quality affordable housing uh, in our region and in Prince George's County, and we continue to meet and exceed that need. Uh, this is a critically important time for our residents throughout the United States and right here in Prince George's County. Uh, as the rising demand for affordable housing continues to limit uh, the supply. According to the latest census that 40% of American residents spend about 30% or more on housing, including 23% that spend uh, at least 23% spend about uh, half of what they make. So meeting the need of cost burden renters is a priority and Gateway at Peerless brings yet another step closer to effectively addressing housing and affordable housing here in Prince George's County. Uh, beyond the, an incredible community just minutes away from the town center at Upper Marlboro, Gateway at Peerless is offering some incredible amenities for our new residents, including indoor fitness center, a great room, computer lab, and a play area. Uh, I was also pleased to learn that gold certification in addition to solar technology and uh, ERVs uh, were here to reduce the residents' utilities expenses. Affordable housing boosts the local economy, it builds community, and it uplifts the residents. I know the residents of Gateway at Peerless will build a strong and vibrant community together. Everyone deserves an affordable place to live. Another reason this ground opening is so important, we need the gateway at Peerless in Upper Marlboro needs the gateway at Peerless. It will be an integral part of the future of District 6 community as we continue to grow together. And I wanted to, to say I thank each and every one for being here and their hard work getting this community built. So continue to do the great work. We as the County Council will continue to support and pour in whatever resources we can. Thanks again to the County Executive and all the stakeholders here. Thank you again. Thanks, Councilman. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. I really appreciate those words. Um, as my children have grown older, they ask uh, more frequently what I do. Um, do I design the buildings? I said, no, there's architects and engineers that do that. Do I build the buildings? I said, no, there's contractors who do that. Do I provide the loans, the financing? I said, no, the banks do that. I'm like, then what do you do? I, I just 
I just do a lot of spreadsheets. That's pretty much all I, all I do. Um, but joking aside, I want to recognize the doers who work so diligently to create something from nothing. Uh, Grim and Parker as architect, Soltes as our civil engineer, uh, Pando Alliance as our environmental consultant, and many, many other professionals. Um, and of course, my good friends and partners at Conifer LaChase Construction, Henry Fay, John Denman, and Tyler Kuhn, who saw, who saw construction through in the face of some bad soils, a pandemic, uh, and very serious, uh, frankly, debilitating construction cost volatility. Um, from me and from Conifer, thank you to everyone involved in designing and building this community. Um, since 1986, the most sizable and successful affordable housing program in the United States has been the Low Income Housing Tax Credit. Uh, tens of thousands of units have been developed in Maryland alone since the inception of the LIHTC, generating wage and property tax revenue, fueling economic revitalization, and creating jobs. Uh, we're in, we are fortunate in this state to have the leadership and partnership of a truly dynamic, strong, and creative housing finance agency. Maryland DHCD provided 9% low-income housing tax credits, rental housing funds, and Section 811 support to Peerless, without which the deal simply would not have been viable. I'm pleased to ask Greg Hare from Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development to say a few words. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. So b before I get started, I was thinking about the rain, and I was thinking, Kyle, you know what they say when it rains on your ribbon cutting. That, that, that means you're going to have a lot of projects in the future. So, yeah. so, so, so we, should, we should be happy about the rain. I don't know, maybe triplets. <laughs> and so uh, good, morning, good afternoon again. I'm Greg Hare, and I bring greetings on behalf of the governor, uh, uh, Governor Hogan, Lieutenant Governor Rutherford, as well as Secretary Holt from the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development. Uh, I'm the Director of Community Development Administration, as, as Kyle's indi indicated, and uh, I do want to just thank my, my colleagues, both at DHCD as well as our partners at the Department of Disabilities. I've seen walking around here somewhere. Good afternoon, guys, and, and thank you all. Um, you know, it really does take our buildings uh, to, to help finance these buildings, so this is something that we, we uh, understand. It takes a very complicated uh, capital stack to get these things done. And so we're really happy to, to support this project. I also want to say congratulations again to the, the whole development team, Conifer, uh, Episcopal Housing. I see Dan over there somewhere hiding uh, uh, under the roof over there. Uh, and the Prince George's County uh, uh, Local Department of Housing and Community Development uh, in the county as a whole. Again, it, it took so many resources to get this deal done, uh, but I think it, it really turned out to be uh, a worthwhile investment. So this is uh, excellent. I also want to thank all the teams, as, as Kyle said, uh, really all the construction, finance, and, and other partners that contributed to the project. For the Gateway of Peerless, uh, the department, we, we funded it with 9% low-income housing tax credits as well as rental housing program funds and, and our 811 program, which again provides uh, rental assistance to the sites. And it, it was a huge investment, but uh, we, we understood the value uh, of a site like this uh, in, in a, such a great location. Uh, the Gateway of Peerless is a, another example of a high quality project uh, that really builds stable, affordable housing while building on the state's economic economy by creating jobs, uh, revitalizing communities. Uh, this is why uh, I think in this fiscal year, the governor and the General Assembly have provided really an unprecedented amount of funding, uh, over $200 million in fiscal year 23, uh, to create and preserve affordable housing across the state of Maryland. And over the last seven plus years, we've financed and closed more than 28,000 units of affordable housing across the, across the state. So it's a, just a huge surge of production. Uh, and I think that that production uh, couldn't be done without partners like Conifer, Episcopal, and so many folks involved. Uh, just recently, uh, in the past couple of years, we've partnered with Conifer for projects like the Preserve at Red Run, as well as with the Episcopal Housing Corporation, Sojourner Place, Sinclair Way in Frederick, uh, Conifer Village at Oak Crest, and that's right here in Prince George's County uh, in Capitol Heights. So, uh, and many more, uh, so too many to name, but it's just a lot, of, a lot of partnership and a lot of great work being done by this team. 
And so there has been just a ton of challenges, though. Uh, and I think we all know those challenges as it relates to the pandemic, rising interest rates, uh, construction costs, busting budgets. But it really does take take a village. And so, you know, it takes uh, that type of partnership to kind of get through these things. Uh, and so before I left the office, uh, I got a, a message and it said, uh, Greg, adjust your notes before you talk about the news about our latest uh, tax credit round. And, and I said, thanks for the update. Um, I did not say I wouldn't mention it. Uh, and so I do want to mention one project, uh, which is really, uh, you know, the epitome of, of what Conifer is doing. And that's another project they were just awarded through our 2022 competitive round, which really is uh, the triplet I was referring to, three projects that are going to be uh, going up in Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, and that is a project that we felt so strongly about that the, the, the secretary went to make sure we gave that project bonus points. So congratulations, Kyle. Uh, and if any of you guys see my team... I, I did not get that email. Um, but, but these are really important projects, and, and mainly because every dollar budgeted in the state funds, uh, on average, returns 20 times the investment as far as economic impact. And that really is, you know, the, the heart of these programs. Uh, but the only way to really sustain that type of progress is by continuing to bring all levels of government uh, state and local government, uh, the private sector, nonprofit organizations, uh, and other uh, uh, community residents together to support important projects like Gateway at Peerless. Uh, I can assure you all that the state of Maryland will continue to be dedicated uh, to these projects and will bring responsible investment, responsible service uh, to create and preserve affordable housing in, in, across these, these communities. I believe that uh, in our communities, we really do have the capability of providing something for everyone uh, when we work with everyone and listen to everyone. And so I think the key here uh, is that we're constantly listening and, and I think all of our teams are really up for the challenge. And so we're really looking to embrace new ideas uh, and not just really on the surface level, but really deep level stuff where we can really make impact. And it takes that a lot of time and a lot of collaboration with our stakeholders. But again, it's something that we've been up for, for the task force. So, um, these things don't happen overnight, uh, but really slowly over time, uh, based on our consistent commitment uh, collectively, uh, so we can make sure that we make a difference in these communities. And so I'll, I'll stop there. I think that's over my, my three minutes, Kyle. But <laughs> just congratulations again uh, for everybody that worked tirelessly on this project. Uh, it's uh, great. OK. If I'd have known we were going to get an announcement of, every, uh, of a new tax credit award, I'm going to start scheduling ribbon, ribbon cuttings like crazy. <laughs> That's going to be great. No, I appreciate that, Greg. Thank you. And we're excited about Admiral Drive. Um, the success of the tax credit program is in its joining together the public sector with private investors. So I want to take a moment to recognize, recognize Wells Fargo for their significant investments in this development, specifically a $15 million equity investment and nearly $30 million in construction and permanent loans. Wells Fargo is a truly valued partner uh, to Conifer. I have the honor of addressing the audience today, but I'm only one representative of a 500 plus employee organization whose every goal and effort relates to the creation and performance of high quality affordable housing. I want to recognize and thank all my colleagues at Conifer who have been directly or tangentially involved in Peerless, especially Denise Miller, Larry Schwager, Sam Leone, Kelly McKenna, Nicole Perez, Kenny Sutton, Lucen Meyer, Betty Perry, Brian Ivey, Stacy Ludgate, and many, many more. As relates to today, I want to recognize Jessica Woodward, who is over here in the maroon, who organized and planned this entire event. Thank you all for your efforts. Dan, you might as well start making your way over. I think the rain's broken. Confer is, uh, is proud to work with locally based nonprofit organizations on many of its housing development projects. And our partnership with Episcopal Housing Corporation in particular is long standing and successful. I want to invite Dan McCarthy from Episcopal to say a few words. It's great to be here today. Thank you so much for inviting us to be a part of this great partnership here. This is our second projects with Conifer in Prince George's County. I mean, I think uh, if you look around and look at the quality of the workmanship you see here for this project, you'll know 
how much this is going to uh, be a long-term asset to the people of Prince George's County. So we're really, pr really proud of the work that the construction team did and on the development side. I want to introduce our, our colleague Ray Newby, who's going to be here. He's going to be providing resident services, as he does with a couple of other uh, projects with uh, Conifer and Episcopal Housing Corporation. And he's really a terrific link to make sure that the residents here can access all the programs that provide them an opportunity to really thrive in this community. So we thank you for your partnership and for all the partners here, finding Financing, construction, design. Thank you so much for letting me be here today. Great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good to see you too. It is wonderful to have an opportunity to thank the many people who participated in the Peerless Development and to take a moment to reflect on and celebrate our success. But I always like to end these events with a reminder of need. The need for affordable housing is overwhelming, not just in Prince George's County or Maryland, but throughout the United States. Let this statistic be your measuring stick. For the 62 units at Peerless, we have had 1,024 applications to date as of Tuesday, 16.5 applications for every unit. And Conifer sees this in every state in which we work, at every development, from Chappaqua to Camden and Chambersburg to Charlotte. We need more tax credits, more soft funds, more vouchers, more density bonuses, more creativity and attention to affordable housing from our leaders at every level. As you leave today, I hope you will be inspired by what this team has designed and built here, impressed by the collaboration of state, county, and, fi and private financiers, and encouraged to see more of it. If so, please mention it to your legislators, your elected leaders, your mayor, and town councils, no matter where you are so that eventually Conifer and Episcopal can develop 100,000 more places like Peerless for deserving residents to call home. Thank you very much for coming. Enjoy the afternoon in units, and the food will be handed out shortly. Thank you. Councilman, we'll do it on your, on your mark. On the count, on the count of three. One, two, and three. Excellent. Thank you. There you go.